Hey guys, so this evening, once I have the toddler in bed, it is my plan to start one of my like childhood favorite books. Um, I'm doing a kind of like buddy read, but not really with Tiffany from Beautiful Minutia. We are both reading Babysitter's Club books <laughs> this weekend, and she is reading one by that like focuses on Marianne. And I'm going to be reading one that focuses on Christy because those were each of our favorite um, members of the Babysitter's Club growing up. I haven't read these books. I mean, I remember really loving them in grade four. So I haven't read them since about that age. Um, yeah, so I'm going to read it. And I thought it would kind of maybe take you along on this reading experience because I feel like it has potential to be a very cringy reading experience and I think that might be a lot of fun to take you along with. So uh, let's see how this goes. as a younger person to a tea. I can't keep my mouth shut. That was that was me completely. And I'm betting that Tiffany was definitely a Marianne and was very quiet and shy. So maybe we would have um, gotten along because Marianne and Christy are best friends. Hey guys, so last night I read half, pretty much exactly half of Christie's Great Idea and I totally, like I read it so quickly I could have finished it last night, but I kind of wanted to drag this on a little bit. I wanted to kind of like sit and think about what I had read so far. Um, yeah, so I'm going to talk about this. I went to the library this morning, so a little bit later I think I'll show some of the books I got. And then I heard about another little free library in my town, and I went and I checked it out. But it was just filled with like pretty little liars books and nothing really that interesting to me. So I left a book, and at least now I know another one that I can like frequent in the future, and maybe eventually I'll get something. Um, anyway, so Christie's Great Idea. Um, I'm actually really enjoying this book more than I thought I would. Um, it's it's not as cringy as I expected because this is really like setting up the idea for the Babysitter's Club since it's book number one. Um, there are like uh, Tiffany were, and I were laughing at some of the like outfits and this one is really great. Uh, so Stacy is really cool because she is from New York City and she just moved to this small little town even though she's like hiding something. Obviously she's hiding something but she is just like so cool with her fashion here. She had, the very first time they met her, she was wearing a pink sweatshirt with sequins and a large purple parrot on the front. Short, tight-fitting jeans with zippers up the outsides of the legs, which I can't quite picture, but okay, and pink plastic shoes. And I don't remember like 
people this old wearing them, but I remember the plastic shoes, plastic like sandals being a thing, um, at least for like younger kids. And then she was very pretty, tall and quite thin with huge blue eyes framed by dark lashes and fluffy blonde hair that looked as if it had been permed recently. And the perming recently, I think is supposed to be like a positive. <laughs> it's not supposed to be um, the idea that I have when people uh, perm their hair. Uh, so this book was written in 86, which is the year I was born. And another thing I tagged here, I'm just, um, you know, some of you are not gonna be very proud of me because I am doggy earing the things that I, that are kind of like sticking out at me. This is what I do. I buy books and I just treat them as they, though they are a possession. Um, where was it? Well, the first time Christy goes and babysits, she actually accidentally ends up babysitting dogs instead of people. Um, and so it was two dogs for a couple of hours. I don't know if it exactly says the amount of time. Um, maybe it said when they, Wednesday afternoon. Um, I'm not sure how long it's for, but, uh, she gets paid a total of $3.50 for at least... I think at least two hours for babysitting two dogs. Um, I can't remember my babysitting wage uh, when I was younger, but I feel like it was a little more than that. Uh, and then at about the halfway mark here is when Christy gets this idea where they are supposed to kind of write a little bit about each babysitting job so that I think future babysitters know what's going on. So I guess I should explain the whole idea between behind the babysitters club is that they have a meeting three times a week, Wednesdays from 5.30 to 6. There are four babysitters um, as of right now. I know another one gets added pretty shortly um, and they are all there and people, their clients can phone in and then they kind of have their pick of like they can reach four babysitters with one phone call is the idea. And uh, yeah, so then I am um, just about to start chapter nine um, and this is Stacy's handwriting and I definitely remember her little hearts. Every little, every eye is dotted with a heart. And um, she makes her A's kind of like, um, you know, like a computer print font. And I remember in grade five specifically wanting to write my A's that way. And I, I'm wondering if it was because of Stacy from the Babysitter's Club, but Christy was definitely the one I related to because I was such a tomboy. Um, yeah, so then I, when I did go to the library, I um, did pick out, where is it here? I did take out book number two because I'm like, maybe I'll just kind of do both of them. I'm not sure about this, but I thought I would, you know, grab it. Uh, they only had book one and two and then I think number seven or something. So we'll see. Um, I'm going to go have some lunch and then this afternoon I'm going to do some reading and share my library haul. Stacy's permed hair and colorful clothes, and the fact that she came from New York City made her pretty special. Okay, so I just finished Christy's great idea and there was nothing like really huge, um, no big changes throughout the rest of the book. But I'm surprised that this was not as cheesy as I was expecting. Um, this is probably largely in part to the fact that Christy uh, doesn't like boys. So I think um, reading about the girl's obsessions with boys in some of these other books uh, would get a little cringy. But I um, marked a few different things. Uh, there's some good discussions in here with kids and their parents. Um, some of it is like teenage whininess kind of thing, but some of it is like actually good discussions. Like Christy, her mom is dating a guy and Christy's being really immature about the whole situation. And um, I don't know, ends up kind of like coming around and maturing a bit. 
Um, what did I bookmark here? Oh, this part I thought was funny. Um, when do you think we will ever need to know how to multiply, multiply fractions? I don't know. Have you ever seen anyone besides teachers and math students do it? No. Do you need to do it in order to go shopping, cook dinner, or babysit? No. I rest my case. School is stupid. Uh, I probably related to that a lot as a kid. I did not enjoy school. I didn't do terrible. I just, I didn't see the point in trying, um, which is definitely why I'm probably more of a Christy or at least maybe a Claudia in that way. Um, more awesome outfit things. Uh, there was a Right, okay, so um, Claudia is kind of like insulting the way Christy is dressing here. It says, really, Christy? A sweater with snowflakes and snowmen on it? You look like a four-year-old. Well, you've got sheep barrettes in your hair, I yell. You think they're adult? Sheep, Claudia informed me witheringly, are in. Who cares? Everything's in sometime. First it was frogs, then pigs, now it's sheep. Maybe next week it'll be snowmen. <laughs> uh, yeah, the descriptions of the outfits. Um, so... I'm not gonna read book two now, I might at some point, um, but it was interesting to go back and read something that I loved so much in fourth grade. Um, so there was that. And then next, my next read that I am doing with Tiffany um, is Love Comes Softly. And this is a Christian, like historical fiction, kind of like romance kind of book. But from what I remember, Actually, I feel like I remember a lot of the book, so we'll see if there's a lot more that I'm missing, but I feel like I remember a lot of it. But this is more of a slow build. It's not just like a, I love you, or that person looks good, so I'm going to marry them kind of thing. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna start this one, see how that goes. This should be a fairly quick read as well. Okay, so I started a, um, Love Comes Softly, and our main character is really bothering me already. I'm not very far, maybe like chapter three-ish, and I thought out of both like Christy's Great Idea and Love Comes Softly that um, Christy's Great Idea would be more cringy, and so far it's the other way. So tonight, I'm not sure if I'm going to read that all evening, or I might take a break and pick up my Anne of the Island and read some of that. Um, I wanted to do a quick library hall though. So I filmed this afternoon my library t or my um, autumn TBR and so these books are on there and they that video will be up before this video. So I won't say any, really anything about them but I got Taylor Adams's Hairpin Bridge. Um, I'm assuming this is a thriller. I got the Thursday Murder Club. Um, yep so I'm not really saying anything about these because I talked about them on there and a monster calls and then I got a couple other books oh yeah here whoa what's going on with the lighting there we go um the babysitters club Claudia and the phantom phone calls is book two we'll see if I get to that then I came across this Diane Mills breach of trust I read oh, whichever book of hers came out earlier this year it has a terrible cover but it was actually a really good book um it was kind of stereotypical, but yeah, it like went deeper than a lot of um, Christian suspense books, so I thought I'd give another book a try. And I got the third book in the Ascendance Trilogy. I'm planning on reading book two this month, and um, so I might continue with the series there. Ooh, and then I got um, Strange Planet. I have followed 
uh, Nathan Pyle uh, on Instagram for a long time. And I haven't really, like, I started following him a long time ago. I haven't paid attention in the last while. And I thought it would just be fun to uh, flip through and read some of those. I've probably read a lot of them, but got that. And then um, Seven Fallen Feathers. This is an indigenous book in, um, I think it takes place in northern Ontario. Seven indigenous high school students died and went missing. They were hundreds of kilometers away from their families, forced to leave home because there was no adequate high school you know, on the reserves. Five were found dead in the rivers surrounding Lake Superior. Um, yeah, so this is like a true story. My friend was reading this and um, I thought I'd give it a try. It might be really heavy. We'll see how that goes. Then I got um, Resistance by Jennifer A. Nielsen. I really enjoy her writing and I've got this book up from the library before but didn't get to it. I think it's like, it says junior fiction, somewhere between middle grade and YA. Uh, World War II, it's a Jewish teenager living in Nazi occupied Poland. And that's all I know. And then I got two books that I requested a few books. Uh, so for September for the Hey Reader, no, I did it wrong again, for the Reader Bookshelf Challenge. The prompt was to read a, a translated book and people gave a few recommendations and actually I have another one. Um, I've got Momo. This was an option uh, before the coffee gets cold and of salt and shore. Honestly, I don't really know anything about these. Um, I didn't look them up much at all. I just kind of requested books people recommended. So I'll have to read the backs of those and see where I go from there. And then I actually did pick up a couple books from the library the other day that I'll just throw in here. First of all, I got this one. It's gorgeous. World of Wonders in praise of fireflies, whale sharks, and other astonishments. So I thought, I thought, I think, oh, okay, no. I thought this was a poetry book. It's most definitely not. But the cover is really stunning. So that's why I requested that one. And then I got more poetry. Oh, this is Barbara King's Oliver, How to Fly in 10,000 Easy Lessons. Thought I would try her poetry. Um, I also got um, In the Salt Marsh. This is Nancy Willard Poetry. I don't know anything. I just requested a bunch of poetry books. And Footprints on the Roof, Poems About the Earth. This is kind of cute. So these are really short poems. Yeah, I think that's like what I've been getting from the library lately. And uh, we will see where the month brings what I all read. And yeah, so let's get back to the day. Okay, so it's Sunday and I'm about to sit down and read a bunch, but I kind of wanted to do a little bit of a rundown on what I have been reading because I don't exactly remember where I ended up. So last night I read some Anne of the Island. You guys, I am enjoying this so much. Um, yeah, Anne is in university, college, something or other, and um, I just... I really enjoy L.A. Montgomery's descriptions, which I'm not usually reading books for descriptions. It's usually more characters. And I do like Anne as a character, but um, I kind of feel like it's weird that I like this book, especially as much as I do. Um, but I'm enjoying this. I'm, I think, a little over a, th a third of the way through that one. And then I can't remember if I read any more of Love Comes Softly since my last update. I'm only on page 34. And I have a feeling, um, my kind of, my plan here is to kind of skim through the rest of the book. Um, like I mentioned, the character, main character is just really whiny. She, okay, so the, the premise of the book, I didn't realize like it happens so quickly. The, um, first chapter, which is only, let's see how many pages. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven pages long. Um, actually before the book even starts, the main character, her husband, has just died in an accident. They're out west somewhere. 
kind of like trying to find a plot of land and um the day of the funeral which is the day after he died <laughs> so the day they're burying him the pastor happens to be there and he is going to be going to like moving on from the area the next day so she gets this marriage proposal by this guy who has a young daughter but his wife is dead and was like if you marry me you can live in my house and in the spring you can go back to your family or whatever as long as you take my little daughter with you and I remember the premise of this book and thinking like this probably did happen back then and I like kind of like the idea behind it but I'm not liking the character of her main character so Marty is the girl oh she's just like I mean like she's definitely this is not an easy situation but she seems really whiny um and I know when there's supposed to be character growth and stuff but uh and then like just the how western and hick the writing is is like the conversations the way people talk is a little bit hard for me to read because I don't normally read these kind of books um so this book is more cringy than I remembered or than I was expecting it to be uh, so I think I'm just gonna skim through the rest of this because I want to kind of like kind of read it but I don't really care to like spend forever reading it so I'm planning on finishing this one today and then I can't remember if I mentioned or not but the audiobook I've been listening to the last couple days is The Imperfect Disciple by um, Jared C. Wilson this is grace for people who can't get their act together which is very fitting um, I'm really enjoying this one um yeah I don't know I don't have a whole lot to say about this um, I'm listening to the audiobook, but I know I would like to come back maybe like in a year from now and like read the physical book and highlight all the things because I like to do that. And so I think most of my day now will be reading the rest of Love Comes Softly. And then if I have time, I will maybe work on these other ones, maybe start another one. We'll kind of see what the day brings. Uh, but first I feel like I got to take out my contacts because I want to just like sit down and read and wear my glasses. Okay, so I finished the book while the little guy passed out on the couch in the living room as well. Um, it ended up maybe not being quite as cheesy as it started out. Um, I doggy-eared some of the words, like some of these Western words. I don't, I don't read books like this, so I found that part difficult. Like see if I can find this here. Got me some cuttings a few years back from a man over across the creek. Yeah, I don't read books like that. Um, but like the storyline behind this, I actually, I remembered a lot of it. Um, like the very, the second last chapter, kind of like this fairly big event happens. And it's like, yeah, I even remembered that. And like all these little bits throughout. Um, it's definitely not going to make me continue like the series or um, start reading this genre again, but uh, it was better than it started. So I guess that's a good way to end. Next up, I want to try reading this book. It's not officially on my TBR for September, um, but it is a graphic novel. I think it's based on a true story of a 14 year old girl who wrote to the Winnipeg police and said like, what would you do? What course of action would you take if I went missing? Um, just because of the problems where um, Indigenous people aren't, I don't know, I feel like when they go missing, it's not. Um, like, action isn't taken as quickly in Canada, at least in the prairie, prov prairie provinces here. And so um, I'm pretty sure this is based on a true story. I think it was a 14 year old girl that wrote in. And yeah, so I'm going to read this this evening yet and then spend some time um, reading some more Anne.
Okay, so I wanted to do a quick little wrap up of my weekend. I got too tired last night when I was reading to finish it, um, to finish my thoughts. So I started the weekend by reading Christie's Great Idea. The little one's having fruit snacks down there. Um, this one was better than I thought. There is some like really practical advice on babysitting and like real life scenarios I feel like that kids that are at babysitting age could get stuff out of this. And my daughter who wants to start babysitting right away is now halfway through this. So hopefully she can get some good inspiration from there. Um, I've been reading Anne of the Island and I am almost halfway through it now. Uh, I like a lot of what L.M. Montgomery is writing in here. Um, she's, there's a character in here that is kind of facing death at this one point. And it talks about how she has lived her life in a way that she's scared to die because she doesn't think that she has, um, she's lived her life for life on earth. And they have some really great conversations here. Um, I didn't have my highlighter, so I tapped it, but she was leaving everything she cared for. She had laid up her treasures on earth only. She had lived solely for the little things of life, the things that pass, forgetting the great things that go onward into eternity. And then, and I can't remember where it was, but then Anne goes on to like think about how she wants to make sure that she lives for. When she came to the end of one life, it must not be to face the next with the shrinking terror of something wholly different, something for which accustomed uh, something for which a custom thought and ideal and aspiration had unfitted her. The little things of life, sweet and excellent in their place, must not be the things lived for. The highest must be sought and followed. The life of heaven must be begun here on earth. I really liked that. So I'm finishing that one. I finished Love Comes Softly and I still really like the storyline. The writing, or maybe the time period, it's just not really my thing. Um, but I do like how it ended. I don't really have a whole lot to say with that. I'm still listening to The Imperfect Disciple. Really enjoying this one. Would highly recommend this one. And then yesterday I read If I Go Missing and this is, it's only like 55 pages and it is based off of a true story. Uh, the author, when she was 14, wrote a letter to the Winnipeg police. Um, and it really raises awareness, I think, of how indigenous women are going missing in this country and they're not really looked for like other people are. And um, yeah, this book is very powerful. Really enjoyed it. So that was my reading weekend and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. And I hope my next one is going to be like a fall, like complete fall reading vlog. I'm like so excited by next weekend. I think it's going to be just complete autumn here. <laughs>